Oh, well, I'm kind of <laughs> got particles all over in my collar here. I've been uh, uh, chipping coffee trunks all morning long, making mulch for my uh, fruit trees. Yes, I've been taking the orange trees and star fruit and and I'm putting down some chicken manure and putting down some lime and then I'm taking all this coffee I'll and cut and I'm chipping it through our chippers over here and and I got chips all over in me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to take a second shower today. But I thought I'd uh, shoot a video. Uh, one of the longtime viewers, guy who's been uh, around the channel for many years now, um, had asked me uh, if I do a video about uh, uh, how to develop a market for a nursery. He'd, he's thinking he wants to go into nursery production, wants to start a nursery, and he wants to know how to, uh, to you know, develop the marketplace so we can sell the product. Well, there's probably just about as many ways to do that as there are people who produce plants. Okay, and so I, I think to look at it, there's a few very basic things you have to answer first. All right, and one would be, do you intend to be retail or wholesale? In the nursery business, there's a hard line there, okay? Some people are both wholesalers and retailers, um, but in general, there's the people who grow material or, you know, make compost or whatever it is uh, in a wholesale fashion, and then there's the people that usually buy that stuff, turn around and sell it to you. You know, if you go into Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart and you walk in, there's a nursery there. Well, they don't grow any of this stuff. They don't make any of the stuff, right? It's all done by somebody else. And usually it tends to be locally sourced. This is an important factor. Uh, one of the things about nursery, as far as a business is concerned, uh, it is ordinarily quite local. Uh, also, if you have a retail nursery around and you have good nursery people working there who might be certified, you know, or maybe have a degree in horticulture or something, um, that local information is also very important, you know. Uh, well, I could talk about Wisconsin, but only because I used to live there and I grew stuff there. I could talk about California, but that's only because I used to live and grow stuff there. Arizona, same thing. You get me into a spot, like I get questions about orange diseases in Sydney, Australia. I have to go to uh, University of Australia, Sydney, and look that up for somebody who asked me a question, you know, because... Uh, Local. Local is a big deal when it comes to plant production. Um, it's also one of the few businesses that's still made in America. You want to be a, a, an American patriot, you know, and put a American flag bumper sticker on your car, you know, drive around like that and say, buy America, you know. Well, yeah, I think the sticker used to say "Buy American." These days, it's "Buy America." Japanese have bought the islands. The Germans have bought every. It's "Buy America." No, uh, you know, nursery is one of the. That, I'm joking, but it's true, isn't it? You know, we definitely were for sale, but. Nursery is one of the few things where a lot of what you find in in a retail nursery is actually produced in this country. Yeah, there, are, there are imports. Most of the pots are, uh, the the clay ones are imported, you know. They're either uh, Asian or Italian or places like that. Um, oh, some of the tchotchke stuff, you know, the pink plastic flamingos and all that junk. Well, that's mostly, you know, Chinese-made stuff. But as far as the, the fertilizers, most of them, the composts in the nursery, the... Um, the plants you find in the nursery, these, this is all American-made stuff. Pretty amazing. It's also a little bit of a different uh, business these days because m most retail-type businesses used to be based on, uh, on 40 gross 
figure. That uh, means that you t whatever you paid to get something, you turn it around and you sell it at a 40% markup to the customer because that is probably enough to pay the utility bills, pay the rent, pay your employees, pay for the product, and maybe make a little bit to put in the bank for your company. Uh, that's still how a lot of the nursery business operates. It's not entirely. I see you know, $250 fig cuttings out there without even a root on them. You know, people do a lot of, if I think, of funny things. But whatever, if they can make money on it. But, yeah, so, main first question. Do you plan to go into a wholesale or a retail type business? This is going to matter a lot. Um, because your market is, you know, the general public if it's retail but your market is other nurseries if it's wholesale and so if it's wholesale then uh, you're either going to hire yourself a salesperson or you yourself are going to be the one that runs a route where you're actually probably going to go around once a week through all your clients and uh, and say hey look what I got in the truck today check this out can I get an order you know we used to call it the candy store a lot of the nurseries, uh, when I worked in California, the wholesalers would, you know, send their sales reps out with a whole pickup load full of stuff and open up the back of the truck and go, oh, wow, I got to have that. Oh, oh, this is lovely. Oh, I, oh, that's wonderful. <gasps> Who grew that? Oh, my goodness. You know, it's a candy store. And so that's kind of, uh, you know, how you sell stuff really is present it. Um, Oh, you could do cold calling, but you're usually better off if you're going into the wholesaling. It's you start pounding the pavement and the telephone first. Start calling people. Tell them what you're doing. Tell them what you got. Uh, tell them you'd be glad to come by and show it to them, you know, and blah, 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 and that type of approach. Um, and then maybe you get yourself some accounts. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> but... You often you can't, especially if what you have is what people are looking for. Well, there we go. That's number two. Who's your target market? This is directly connected to wholesale retail. But um, let's say if you're uh, wanting to sell retail plants to people, you got to know who those people are. I mean, what do they want? What do they look like? What do they eat? <laughs> How do they dress? You know, what's their life like? You need to know about them if you intend to be selling them things. The more you know your target market, the easier you'll find it uh, to sell to them. So then there's a third thought on this, and that's niche. Uh, it's French word, all right, but uh, N-I-C-H-E accent. It means, you know, that, the, that maybe what you have may be something that there's a group of people that desperately want this. It may not be a very large group, but they want it. And so that's a niche market. <laughs> You know, not everybody uh, wants water lilies in their garden. But the people that produce water lilies, there's a niche market out there with the people who like to grow them in their ponds. You know, uh, here in Hawaii, I've seen people who do nothing but hibiscus breeding. Um, oh, so many kinds. Um, and that, that's definitely a niche. I mean, I'm nuts on crazy good hibiscus myself. Uh, you know, my only problem with hibiscus is they're too easy to make cuttings from, and so I'm always snitching mine. The only time I ever see the really nice ones is usually at these buy-in sales, the uh, Big Island uh, Association and Nursery. You know, they'll have those a couple times a year whenever there isn't a virus pandemic around. And uh, so those guys will bring their wares in there, and they are gorgeous, and oh my goodness. And I want so bad to snitch a cutting because they want $25 for a gallon plant, you know. But I won't. That's not right to do it that way. So, Yeah, specialty. Specialty nursery. Uh, it, it addresses a niche. And so a story on that, uh, maybe that 
you know, all I can really talk about is what I know and my experience with this. Although, I guess it was the right question to ask of me because I have um, opened my own nurseries several times. I have run nurseries for other people. I've worked as salesmen in nurseries. I, I guess I'm qualified to answer these questions by now. Uh, but, yeah, so when I was working as a salesman in nursery in California, we were having a, um, a demographic change in the area, you know, the area had been predominantly uh, um, oh, white and Latin, um, certain amount of Asian contingent that had been there forever, you know, since the gold rush days, an African American, uh, and that was really most of the, the the people ethnically when I first started selling there. But then later, we had a huge influx of people from uh, um, India, from the Middle East, Pakistan. Um, escapees from the Russian war in Afghanistan, um, people from uh, um, coastal capitalist cities in China and Taiwan escaping to the west coast of the United States with their money because they thought maybe communist China was going to, you know, shut down the ports. And so things started to change very rapidly. And so that meant the people I was selling plants to uh, were not the same people that I used to sell plants to. What they were looking for wasn't the same. Uh, it, it all changed. It was kind of extraordinary. Well, I mean, for instance, the Japanese fuyu persimmon, the crunchy persimmon like a tomato um, that you could eat like an apple. That one, there. it used to be in California that the hachia, which is the big ox heart shape, one that has to be soft, that was the one that most Americans grew and planted in California. I guess maybe it was because of the bigger size or a lot of people like their persimmons smooshy to make, you know, cookies, pies or whatever out of. Anyway, that was what we had around. But once so many uh, Asians began to move into the area, they all wanted the non-astringent crunchy type. Uh, and that is not something that we ever sold much. I mean, maybe if I sold five trees a year it was about all well that five trees became 250 trees a year after a while and i still and i couldn't keep up with the demand it kept growing i'm sure it has finally planed off but yeah so what people were asking for began to change well as a salesman i realized that there was a whole lot of stuff these folks were asking for there was no way i could ever even get it into the nursery in California. I had no suppliers that would raise things like, oh, they were asking me for sugar cane. They were asking me for guavas. You know, they were asking for mango trees. Um, you know, asking for various varieties of uh, unusual herbs and spices and things like this that, you know, were things they knew back home in India or things they knew back home in Taiwan, but not something that we commonly have, uh, you know, um, in nurseries in the Bay Area. Now a lot of it has caught up, but there was a point where I looked at it, I said, my goodness, look at this. There's all this stuff they want. I can't get it to sell it to them. So what I did is I started growing it. I got a nursery license on the side from the state of California, opened up a nursery in my backyard, and then uh, began selling it on the weekends at the farmer's markets. And so here's a way. See, I kind of already had an idea who my target market was. I had tailored what I was growing to match that target market. And of course, I, I discovered the target market as a salesman working in the nursery with all the answer, all the no, sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry, can't get, no, no, can't get, you know, that I, I kept coming up with. And so, well, there's no reason why I keep having to say no. Uh, I can say yes uh, for me. Yeah, so I, I started hitting farmer's markets, um, did uh, three different ones around the Fremont, California area. Um, you know, I, that worked out too. Well, I was cut back in uh, labor and I wasn't getting full-time employment and blah, 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 blah. 
And eventually what happened is I did get full-time employment. Then eventually I ended up running the store. Um, and so, you know, I had uh, hired one other person to take care of the farmer's market thing. But after a while, it just was a conflict of interest. Running a nursery for a group of partners and running my own nursery in competition, sometimes I, I, I closed that nursery and I stopped marketing in uh, uh, farmer's markets, mostly because I was busy running a nursery for somebody else and they were paying me plenty enough money I didn't need to worry about it. So, uh, But, you know, there's, there's a, a kind of a story on how I discovered who my target market was, found the niche that they existed in, and then created the product that they were looking for and put it out where they would go to find it. And the farmer's markets were very popular in California. Everybody showed up there. And uh, a lot of the uh, uh, Asian immigrants and Middle Eastern immigrants uh, were uh, very much natural towards these markets because they had markets something like that back where they came from. And uh, so that was a good way. Um, but there's so many ways, all right? I mean, there's a whole lot of uh, exotic food crop right now um, that people seek. And uh, all of that is niche market. I mean, even even Yacon has not become mainstream quite yet. Um, it's getting there, but you can't just you know pick up a seed catalog and, and get Yacon if you want to grow it. Um, I have people ask me for it because I have it, uh, and that's pretty much how I got my Yacon was hand to hand originally too, and so some of these things are hard to find. Um, well, I've got white jabuticabas out here right now. I'm going to have to get into transplanting. I got my first crop of seeds uh, from the tree. Very nice fruit. Really interesting. Uh, uh, very fond of it. It bears young and early, blah, blah, blah. And Well, now here's a niche market because um, we have what we call uh, rod here, rapid ohia death. Uh, our ohia trees have... Uh, uh, contracted two different imported funguses that are pretty much being carried around by a uh, by a beetle, uh, also by pigs and by people. Uh, it's being transported in a number of different ways. But these funguses are getting around arrowhea trees. They were one of the major hardwood species here on the island. The trees are all dying. Well, they're in the Myrtacea. And because of that, state of Hawaii has banned the importation of all Myrtacea. You can't bring any more Myrtacea into Hawaii. Um, I mean, there may be some special way it can be done for specific reasons, but in general, I cannot bring Myrtacea onto this island anymore. Well, we used to. Uh, all the guavas got here that way. All the jabuticabas are all Myrtacea. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, Joe Hewitt, my good friend, recently there a few years back, had imported more jabuticaba varieties from uh, South America than I even thought existed. And so they are here. And some of them are growing here on my farm. The rest are over on Joe's farm. Um, and so we have the trees here. And as they begin to produce, as they reach age, we're going to have seed on trees that you won't be able to import anymore. Now we can sell the local stuff, see? And so all of the Jabuticaba collection, frankly, that Joe made, uh, that I've helped him grow, um, it's all niche. Hawaii can't import any more of them. And some of the ones we brought in might have been the only ones that were ever imported here. Others had been previously imported, but there's not very many around. So again, here's a, here's a niche. Now, obviously I know who the target market is. The target market is anybody who wants to boot a cabas, you know. And, uh, well, it, this channel, this channel for me is probably one of my major ways that I advertise. So it goes to wholesale retail, uh, who's your target market what's the niche you know and then uh, and then that brings us to advertising 
People don't know you got what you got unless you let them know they, that you have it. They got to figure it out somehow. Uh, you know, in a farmer's market, well, advertising is basically just tabling and answering people's questions as they come by, putting up your signs and whatever. You know, the advertising's pretty much right there on spot. Uh, I would definitely have uh, a website these days. Um, you, your actual nursery could be full of old rusty Chevy pickup trucks, you know, with three-legged pigs hanging around, but your website might look like the Taj Mahal. Uh, that's that's happens a lot these days. So your online digital presentation, especially if um, there's a way you can, you know, take orders or ship stuff uh, that way, you know, you literally you can make your entire nursery mail order. You know, that's it's that simple. But you know, advertising in the right locations is how you get people to understand that you're there selling stuff. Uh, doesn't really change. It's always the same. They just got to know. Um, you know, if you have a location like mine here, a sign on the road works to some extent. This channel works. Anytime I have something that I really want to promote and I want to get rid of, if I get on the channel and I start hammering on about it and taste it in front of the camera, you know, da, 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 um, I create a desire in people and so they want it. You know, so they know I have it, you know. And some of the things they know I have aren't easy to get. Uh, not a lot of vanilla vines around out there, for instance. There's not a lot of white pineapple around out there, for instance. You know, um, not a lot of uh, some of the more exotic types of dragon fruits and so on. Um, well, we got them. <laughs> you know, and so if you want them, pretty much maybe you're going to come talk to me about it. Uh, and because of the channel, people know that. So advertising. Yes, advertising. How do you advertise? Well, you hand out business cards to people. Uh, if it's a wholesale, you advertise a lot of times by driving around and presenting yourself. You know, you create an availability list of what you grow. You know, you score everything for what its quality and size is. You pack a lot of the coolest stuff in the truck and you bring it down and you let the people see it. You know, um, there's your advertising. Uh, I don't like using things like uh, Facebook at all, but I know my partner, uh, Ellen, has used Facebook Marketplace very successfully um, to sell uh, pineapples, pineapple tops, slips, and so on. That's worked really well for her. Um, and so th there's another way to do it. You know, uh, social media. Social media. Uh, <laughs> social media can destroy you, too, but... Uh, Nevertheless, it's, it is a really good way you can get your name out there. Yeah, so that's, those are the main ones, uh, I think, as far as how do you get this thing going. Uh, you got to get out there and pound the pavement. Nobody knows you're growing stuff if you're sitting back in the woods going, Oh, is this beautiful stuff? Boy! People really like this if they knew I was back here in the woods. Well, you can be back here in the woods, but if you're using a camera that's a window to the world posted on the internet, um, I suppose you can ship from the woods to Berlin if you want to. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a, there's a lot of lot of things today that we did not have. Uh, mostly, it's because of the internet and social media and digital technologies these are all i mean amazon you know amazon doesn't really have a brick and mortar or anything uh it's you know it's it's a business where the goods could be coming from almost anywhere and being routed to you because in some cases amazon is nothing but the coordinator and as a nursery uh operator that's entirely possible I know people across the whole island growing different types of things. If I wanted to be selling what they grow, uh, I, I could be doing that too, you know. But basically, I just sell what I raise here. And so then you think about 
what is the size? You know, what do you want to deal with? You, <laughs> it depends on how much energy and money you want to put behind projects. Um, Monrovia, for instance, is the uh, world's probably largest purveyor of nursery stock. Definitely the United States' largest purveyor. Um, uh, I'm pretty familiar with those guys. I did a lot of business with them. Um, visited their farms. They, they position their growing sites uh, in, in, like the Pacific Northwest. They have them in Southern California. They've got them in, uh, you know, in uh, I believe Arizona. I think there's one down there. Uh, Georgia, I think. I think they got another one in Michigan, for instance. They position nursery operations in different areas around the country to provide the type of materials that that area of the country would need. And so they, they set up to grow in the areas uh, of their national distribution. Maybe they're even international, but they're definitely coast to coast. You can find their plants. Now, that's a big operation. They got guys in white lab coats that test soils and everything. You know, it's, it's pretty sophisticated. They got it pretty well all worked out uh, as far as how this is done, you know, and so on. You know, on the other hand, a um, lot less energy. My operation over here, when I retired, I told myself, I ain't going out anywhere looking for money, work, etc., etc., etc. Anybody needs me for something, I'm right here. Anybody wants to buy plants that I grow, I'm right here. Uh, if somebody needs fruit or whatever, uh, I'm here come get it i don't go anywhere i don't deliver um you know the furthest i'll go away is the post office is one mile from the house i will wrap up stuff on occasion uh, seeds and plants and put them in the post office and send them out that's as far away as i go uh one mile to get to the post office um uh, yeah, that, that was just the idea I had about how was this business supposed to be uh, because I didn't want to be stressing driving around the countryside trying to deliver stuff or any of this. No, I wanted no part of loading and unloading trucks and so on. Had enough of that earlier in my life. You want to talk to me, you come here, you talk to me. Maybe I've got a name at this point where people go, oh, that's the Green Garden guy. Yeah, well, so... Maybe I have a bit of a reputation that allows me to be able to say, hey, you guys want to talk to me, you come here, you know. Yeah, that's something that has to be established. But, you know, uh, pretty much any type of an Internet business that you set up with plants, though, I mean, you can actually use Amazon uh, as your gateway. You know, you can sign on as a, as a third-party vendor uh, with those guys. As a matter of fact, I just bought some uh, a plant and some seeds through Amazon. Um, they they weren't from Amazon. It was somebody else. Two other people were doing this stuff. But yeah, hey, you know, you get yourself listed in a place like that. Anybody that happens to be looking for what you got, it's pretty good chance it's going to Google up because if it's on Amazon, it's going to show up on Google and blah blah and so forth. You know. These are these are massive, massive uh, internet companies, and once you get yourself involved in them, that's why people know who I am because I'm tied into Google. Uh, you know, the AI pushes me to some extent. So well, that's about all I got to say on the subject for today. Um, hopefully, that helps a little bit, uh, just to understand. What are the things that you have to define before you go into all of this uh, if you intend to be successful? So you know which direction you're pointed. 